Good morning, here we are in the greenhouse. This is early April, and we just wanted to look at a couple of the details that are happening in here right now. There are some interesting things going on. At this time of year, I try to um, plant a lot of stuff. So we have a lot of trays filled with uh, seedlings that are coming up to get all the seeds going for this year. So the peppers, the tomatoes, all those things are, are starting to go. It's almost time to plant the cucurbits, but they do go in a little bit later. And so we haven't started those yet. But the um, normal stuff that we plant every week. So here we have the lettuce. Uh, we have lettuce, green onions, and broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, cilantro, beets, and uh, chard. And then over here I have some romaine, more cilantro, dill, and uh, radishes, which look horrible. And then this one didn't come up. And this was a parsley variety. I think this was Hamburg parsley that we grow for the roots, to eat the roots, kind of like you eat a carrot. You eat the carrot part, the root part of the carrot. So those are doing good. And here's another tray of alfalfa. I have alfalfa up on the upper table, but I wanted to get another tray of alfalfa going so that we have this alfalfa to grow outside. Um, the 400 plugs I have up above are actually to go inside here, so they were started um, a while back. And I've pointed those out in other videos. So inside the propagation house, on my heating mat, uh, I do have this heating mat here. It plugs in right here into, the, into that bad boy, and then it goes through the orange cord about 20 feet away to the plug-in and then this mat right here warms this up and it holds four trays easily and if you smash them together you can kind of get four and a half so another one could be on here we're still having some really cold nights which is uh, it's fine but it's not ideal for this time of year but in here today we're at about 62 62 63 degrees fahrenheit and these are these are our these are our little beauties in here and they're doing good so i have several different varieties um this was a these were peppers and i just saved the seed from the grocery store let's see if we can get that to focus anyway these are just sweet peppers from the grocery store that i liked now this is early girl of course i bought that seed and then there's big beef tomato a purple beauty pepper um this is a big tomato. I named this one big. This is a Landry's breeding project I've been doing. This was a big red tomato that was beautiful. And then we've got ancho peppers and Selena um, tomato. That was a big ox heart shaped um, tomato. And there is a tomato named ox heart, but that was another um, Landry's project that we're doing. So these tomatoes in here, I like to rub my hand across them like this every day. And you just rub them like that, and it helps them to be strong, to develop strong stems. And it, it makes, them, makes them healthy and happy. This one is um, big tomato. So this one that says big, and this one that said big, same variety. As I transplanted them, they just ended up in different trays, which is a normal thing. But my little propagation house here is pretty empty. The shelves are empty. Um, and that's fine for this time of year. And I had a question. Pam asked about the wasps and if the wasps were still in here. And yes, there they are. There are the wasps. Let me see if we can do, a, if I can hold it still. There we go. Yeah, see, they're there. They're happy. They're healthy. They're gentle. I like diversity. I don't like diversity that's painful and harmful. I mean, if a person was allergic, it could be harmful, possibly. If a person, you know, was, I don't know, I guess, I don't know, can people die? Can you go into anaphylactic shock from a wasp sting? But anyway, um, we did have, I think we had three or four stings last year from wasps. So um, I don't know that I will let that wasp nest stay right there where it's on the top of your head. But those are... Those are the the uh, those are most of the transplants that we have here. Now inside the house, in my propagation area, I have a lot of 
I have a lot of things going on in there too. Um, seeds that are getting started. Once they get big, they come out here. This is Walla Walla onion, ready to go. So these will be planted um, soon. These get planted the, you know, the first and second week of of the year um, in April here. Not of the year, but in April. So I have Landrace onions, Walla Wallas, and I have candy onions. And that's pretty much the, those are my varieties for this year. So we're super excited about getting those guys going here. But they're pretty big. They do look good. So as you look in here, I'm just going to gently lift this out. Okay, see how that came out with the, the root ball stayed intact? I did not pinch the bottom of this beforehand. So it came out just like that. You can see the little bulb that is forming there. I'm going to set this down and see if I can get a close-up. So you can see the bulb of the onion starting to bulb up just a little bit. When they do that, that's when I like to transplant them. If you don't have a good root ball and a good, good bulbing action going on when you are planting the onions, I don't really like to plant them. I think they do better if you don't break that root ball and if you get the, and if, you know, if you have a little bulb on the end. So if you look at this one right here, you can see that one has a pretty good bulb on it. Let's do a close up. Yeah, so right there, you can see two cells there with a good bulb. You can see some back behind. Let's uh, focus on the correct thing. Try that again. Anyway, there's some bulbs there. So there is bulbing happening in these. So this is the perfect time to get them transplanted. Now let's go over here and check the alfalfa. So I'm just gonna, here again, these have not been loosened on the bottom. Um, I'm just gonna go to a random one. Let's just go inside to maybe this one right here and see what happens. Okay, good, it came out good. So this one came out good, and it has, uh, you can see the roots on the bottom, quite a few roots down there, and it looks like it only has two or three, looks like three alfalfa plants in there. So if you have uh, like only one or two or three plants, and it's putting all those roots in the bottom and the whole thing comes out without breaking the, breaking the root ball, this is time to transplant. So I really like that. So that's happy. Uh, that's good. That's what I'm looking for is a good root bound root. Now, these grasses that I planted should have been outside already, but we have we are having snowstorms and so they're not ready to go, but they are ready to transplant, but I don't have anywhere to put them outside because I don't really want to plant them in a snowdrift and I can't see the ground. No, they would survive the cold out there because these guys are tough. So this one right here, let's see if we can get a close up and then we'll see if I can hold it still. This is a test, a camera, a camera test. Okay, good. So there's that. And we're just gonna pull this up without loosening the bottom. We'll see what happens. Cameraman, do your job. Okay, so. <laughs> the cameraman can't do his job. I need a cameraman. So here we are. Bam, that was beautiful. So you can see the roots nicely there. And that looks really good to me. You got all the roots in the bottom that are messing around there. And then you see the long root coming way down. And that root was actually on the bottom of this bad boy here. So when we lift this up like this, we can see the root mass on the bottom. This means it is high time to get these transplanted. I have a, a real problem because transplanting these right now can't be done because there's no, uh, there's, there's no way I could take you outside and show you snow everywhere. With, uh, so anyway, it's pretty awesome. I was using the tool fabric in here to cover this because as these were coming up, the birds were eating it. 
So I've got this tool fabric. This is wedding dress fabric. You can buy a bolt of this on Amazon for cheap. Under 20 bucks you can get a roll of this. Three, four feet wide and uh, 100 feet long. So it did, it helped. It helped the birds from, from eating this. Why are the birds in my greenhouse? Because there's holes in my greenhouse where they can get in. And I'm not really overly concerned about that. I should be because they were eating stuff, but uh, that is the update for the seeds in the transplanting and what's going on at the first part of April. Hopefully this helps you to transplant something.